First is, you know him with the EMS, he's with the City of Houston Public Health Authority. He has the answers that we should know about today. You talk about coronavirus, it's changing every day. There's something new to learn about it. Yeah, the virus fortunately doesn't seem to be changing, but the situation is rapidly evolving. That's absolutely one of our challenges. What are the symptoms of coronavirus as opposed to the flu? How, how do they differ as much as we know right now? Yeah, great question. This is one of the challenges with the coronavirus. So the early symptoms are actually very much like the flu. People have fever. About 80% of people have fever. So 20% of people aren't even having fever, making it a challenge. So fever is very common. Um, respiratory uh, symptoms, predominantly lower respiratory, so a deep cough, as opposed to nasal congestion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a deep cough, uh, are, those are the two big things that we worry about. But people also get body aches, and they can get a variety of other things in small percentages. So there is not one single symptom complex that you have to look at. The clinicians, the doctors have got to look at the whole picture to try and narrow down somebody who we think may have coronavirus. I, 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 as I've looked at what's happening on the national scene, it, it's amazing to me how something like this can take on a political bent. That mm -hmm. it's, I, I guess I shouldn't be shocked, but we're, we're being, the media's being accused of being uh, a part of the Democrats' efforts to bring down the president, something like that. And so it seems to me that medical professionals have been saying, have been pretty consistent about the potential for this virus impacting the United States, correct? A absolutely. And in fact, if you've pay, been paying attention, you know that really for decades we've been worried about, you know, something like this. In fact, they made movies about it. Now, the movies often are, you know, greatly dramatized, but the concept of a virus uh, developing someplace and then spreading rapidly around the globe uh, is not something that we've, we haven't been you know worrying about. And in fact, we've already seen it. We saw it with H1N1. That right. one that became a pandemic. We also worried about viruses that had high death rates. Now they didn't become pandemics, but I'm talking about SARS and MERS and even Ebola. Those are viral illnesses that had high death rates. Now we were able to contain that spread, but. H1N1 spread around the world, low death rate, however. So what we're dealing with now, coronavirus, what is its death rate as, com as, as far as we know yeah. as compared to some of those other diseases? Yeah, so when you talk about death rate, you talk about the number of deaths divided by the number of people that you know are infected. And right. so this is the denominator is the really the unclear uh, value right now. And so we believe, based on the current data, which may be inaccurate, is that the death rate is dancing somewhere between 2 and 2.5%. Two and mm -hmm. uh, pretty consistently been in that range. But again, Again, we, you know, we, we feel, we, uh, we anticipate that we're underestimating the denominator, um, but that will come in time. That 2% doesn't mean anything unless you compare it to something else like the flu, for example. What right. is that death rate? Too? Yeah, and, and thank you for asking. That's exactly, so the, the seasonal flu in the United States has about a 0.1% death rate. Okay. Okay. So we're looking at 2 plus percent versus 0.1. So that's, you know, it's exponentially larger. Okay, so we know some of the challenges. We know some of the symptoms. What can we do as a community? And what is the community doing to prepare for the possibility? For example, we see people wanting to wear masks a lot. Right. Is, is, that, is that overblown or is there a certain kind of mask that are effective? What should people think about? Yeah, so the, one of the things, you know, we're still learning a lot about this particular virus. Um, but in terms of masks, let's talk about masks. You'll see on the news in, in Asia that a lot of people are wearing masks. Well, that's a cultural thing. They're, they've been doing that for decades, right? Uh, our recommendation is that basically there's no science that shows that a person walking around in public wearing a mask is protected from a virus. And that's for a couple of reasons. One is um, the, probably the risk that they're exposed to is pretty low to begin with. But secondarily, when you wear a mask, you tend to touch your face more. Yeah. So whatever level of protection the mask may afford you is probably negated by the fact that you wind up touching your face more. So if you touch a surface that has virus on it and then you touch your face you know, 10 times more in a day, you know you've now lost whatever benefit. So masks should be put on people who we believe are sick so that they won't be spreading it. And then the healthcare workers who are working closely with those folks, they should also, because since they're working with the patient, they're uh, in immediate proximity, they're at increased risk. But walking down the street, going shopping with a mask probably doesn't do you any good. Where can people go to get specific and truthful information about what's going on with this disease? There are a number of reliable red, uh, websites to go to. First of all, the CDC uh, has a very reliable website um, in terms of what to advise, and they cover everything from you know just regular folks to healthcare providers and so on and so forth. Uh, the other ones are really your governmental ones. So the city of Houston's health department, Harris County has a good uh, website that, that has it. The state of Texas, the Department of State Health Services. They all have the reliable websites. Um, and I will put that information on my website so people right. can get to that. Thank you, Dr. Peirce. For my pleasure. This up. We need to know as much as we can about this. So it's good to have you come in. Thank you. I appreciate it.